Well, hey there, and welcome back to Success to Significance. I am your host, Lady Jen Duplessis, and today I have someone with me that I absolutely love because every time that we're together, we, you know, there's a lot of people who say they're going to share about different opportunities for one another, but this is someone who actually does, and, you know, we share back and forth quite a bit. And I and I will say that it's my fault that we don't communicate more often, and we should, Lisa. <laughs> we definitely should. But um, I want to welcome my friend Lisa Bubari to our show. She is a certified clinical hypnotherapist. I love. I can't wait to hear the story about how you came, became this because I know in your bio you said, you know, that you were you were not feeling good and you went in some direction and then you became, you know, you went through hypnotherapy, you went through all kinds of different things, and finally this is where you landed. So I'm really curious to see how that all trans transpired. But I I think the the thing that's most important about why you're here today is you have alternative healing methods for feeling overwhelmed and under pressure and stress. And, you know, for those that have been listening for a long time to my podcast, you know that I love talking about living a lifestyle, right? Having a lifestyle business that allows for you to reduce the stress in your life and, um, you know, really enjoy being with your family and friends. So with that, Lisa, we'd like to welcome you to the show. I'm so delighted to have you here today. Thank you so much, Lady Jen. Actually, it's my honor and pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. So let's talk about um, your, you know, this is obviously called life, you know, break or uh, Success to significance, <laughs> success to significance, life after breaking through glass ceilings. I know it's a whole mouthful and we never edit that <laughs> We never edit unless we get, unless we get disconnected because I just think it's real. We, you know, I mispronounce words all this the time. This is live. Right. It's it's the way it is. Um, but, you know, life after breaking through glass ceiling. So obviously you went through a, a difficult time in your life that you were able to break through this glass ceiling. And on the back side of this or on the top side of this, it's been you know, wonderful for you as you've um, matured, right? And you want to help women. And so, you know, this is something that is big on my mind right now. I turned 60, I turned 60 last November as we're recording this. And, you know, things have changed physically in my life, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, things are changing and I'm doing the same things and that's probably the wrong, wrong thing to do right now. So, so tell us about your story, share your story with us and how you got here. And then we'll dive into some of the wellness and especially with all the exterior things that are happening in the world and I, how it's affecting us. We may think it's not, but it is. So we'll talk about that later, but let's talk about you. Sure. Okay. Well, um, my story is no different than so many and yet, I believe each and every one of us has our own unique uh, story. Mm -hmm. uh, after my divorce, I was uh, um, actually working at the law firm as an assistant to an attorney. I was a paralegal. And for nine years, I was uh, in the legal field wanting to be an attorney. Actually, I froze on the LSAT test twice. So, and I will come back to that one because I believe you're exactly where you are supposed to be. And I am exactly where I am supposed to be. Uh, if that had happened, I would not be where I am. So in life, we have to take our experiences and realize there are no mistakes. So my body was breaking down. At that time, many don't even know what dictaphone phone is so I was using dictaphone uh, <laughs> I do so, <laughs> right <laughs> there's people who don't know what dictaphone is so oh uh, doing this with the leg and the knee my knee had water I had carpal tunnel I was stressed coming out of a divorce uh, working approximately 11 to 12 hours a day for an attorney that I admired and he was a trial attorney everything was going to trial everything would go to trial so through all that, I had already had two surgeries prior uh, for my ovarian cyst. The first one was 9.2 centimeters. The second one was 8.7 during my marriage. And then 
come at that time, uh, I developed another one. And my uh, OB told me that we're going to go into surgery a month from there. When I came back to the law firm, I went to the HR. She saw me bawling. And she said, what's going on? And I said, you know, I thought the next time something grows in my body, it's going to be a baby, not another cyst. Mm -hmm. So she sent me to an acupuncturist down the street. And I went to him. Bless his soul. Uh, his name is Elon McDolly. I don't know where he is, but he, uh, on the second session that he was putting the needles afterwards, I went to his office, gave me a sheet of paper and said, did you know that hypnosis and hypnotherapy can help with ovarian cysts? What does that have to do with our body, right? I knew of a hypnotherapist not too far from us. I went to her in less than six sessions. What I believed, I healed my ovarian cysts. So when I went to the doctors a week before the surgery and they did the ultrasound, there was absolutely no sign of the cyst. Oh, wow. Wow. So you were and able that, to avoid surgery that second time. Yeah. Yeah. No surgery. That was the third surgery that I was going to go under. Oh, gotcha. Okay. The yeah. third time. So yeah. three is very significant to me. And you will hear more about my 3E method. So since then, and I was still in the legal field, wanting to be an attorney. One night I'm sitting, um, you know, there's always a reason for everything. Friday night, I'm like, crying and everything and I'm alone in my condo the divorce the family wants us to come together and yeah. everything was happening I come to turn the tv on at that time I had to go and do this and not everything sitting um I had yellow pages yellow pages falls on the floor it opens on h and I call to pick it up and there it is Hypnotism Institute in Glendale. <laughs> oh my God. Say so Institute for Hypnosis in Glendale. 6 30 at night on a Friday night, I pick up the phone, curiosity call, and Master Gilboyne with his deep voice answers the phone. And I said, I just wanted to know what this is. I'm curious. He says, why are you calling? Do you know anything about hypnosis? And I tell him that I experienced it and I healed myself. He says, Tomorrow I'm having school. You come to the school and you tell my students about it. <laughs> 930 in the morning, I'm at a school to tell his students I sign up. And that was 1996, oh. 1997. I got my certification. And believe it or not, since 2000, I have been practicing as a clinical hypnotherapist and then went on to get my certification in anger management, stress management, and domestic abuse consulting. Oh, wow. Wow. Beautiful. So I love what I do. <laughs> oh, I, and I know, and I, you know, you have such a great aura about you, energy about you, you know, so giving. And I remember the first time we met at Prosperity Camp, I was like, who's this woman? She's having this women's event. And you know, I don't know. And we talked briefly, like maybe we could talk, I could speak at it. Maybe I couldn't, you know, we hadn't, we didn't really know each other, but I, and I felt, you know, you were in the woo woo world and I was in the corporate thing. But what I realized is that there has to be an integration between all of this. Right. And I don't use woo woo anymore. I use mindset and healing, but, but, uh, you know, there has to be an integration. And I, you know, I personally have grown, um, you know, in my own path of understanding, you know, over the X amount of years, you know, that, and I use a phrase called mindset plus mechanics equals momentum, because I was so ingrained with the mechanics of what I was doing in the financial services industry, that until I figured out, hey, wait a minute, I got to get my head on straight in order to do these mechanics. And I think a lot of people um, don't combine that to create momentum in their life whether it's their business financially, it's their life. Um, some people are all about, well, I'll just dream it and manifest it. But, you know, you got to have the mechanics to deliver. So it's it's all of this. It's so important. So once I figured that out, I was like, oh, I, I really like this person, Lisa. And, <laughs> and I'm sure you had the same thing as like, whoa, she's kind of rough around the edges, right? As far as, you know, corporate and stuff. Um, <laughs> 
but I think this is really important. And in, you know, I mean, I'll just give you, there's a statistic that just came out. You know, I think a lot of people know I coach mortgage loan officers, real estate agents, and lots of business owners, right. That have just generic business owners, right. but specifically in the mortgage space right now, 38% of all licensed loan officers have left the business as of 2023, right? They, they ran in 20, and here we are in 2024 recording, but the stat just came out. That's nearly half of the, of the mortgage people. I know there's gonna be a stat for realtors because it's such a rough time, right? Um, but let's talk about business owners. They're having a rough time right now. Inflation's high. We don't know what's happening you know, overseas. We don't know what's happening here in our country right now with what's happening at all the universities. Um, we don't know what's happening with um, the election, right? There's, and then, and then we have things going on with Israel, which I know is near and dear to your heart. All of this stuff is happening, and we just think that it's all happening outside of us, but it isn't. Tell well, us, we are part of all this, right? Right. The energy. Here's Tell us how it happens. How does it happen that? You know, I don't watch, let's say someone's, I don't watch news because it's negative, but somehow it's getting in. So tell us, how does this happen? Well, we are part of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it doesn't matter if I get the energy via Zoom or I get the energy because I'm part of it. I'm originally from Iran. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born. And I am Armenian, so there is that Christian part of me, and then in a Muslim country, but we were treated very well when we were there. I've yeah. been a part of America. I'm an American. I've been here since 1976. So since my childhood, my teenage yeah. years, yeah. I have been integrated in America. And yet I consider myself, you know, someone says, are you Middle Eastern? Are you Caucasian? Are you this? I'm Caucasian. Yeah. I'm from Middle East, yeah, right. but it's, I see, that's the whole thing. What is happening around the world is affecting us without affecting us directly. Mm -hmm. What's happening in the workforce, it's affecting us without affecting us. And here's a short thing. I have a condominium that um, the insurance carrier no longer was carrying it. They dropped California is become one of the worst places to own a condo right, because fire. the insurance carriers, right? Because of fire, because of flood, because of earthquake, because of everything. So there is not one disaster. There's four disasters in California, and yet it's the golden states to come to, right? Right. So I had to search for a new condo carrier. All the big ones are not carrying. I found one, I'm talking to insurance, the agent, and she is overwhelmed, anxious, under a lot of duress and stress. Yeah. It's affecting her because of what the country and what the state is putting pressure on each agent. So here is an agent that used to have a big company. She reduced it. Now they are saying if you want to keep your agency, you have to have minimum of four employees. How can they survive when labor cost is going up? I know. They so just what's happening, much, right? Yeah. Everything is like a yo-yo happening in the workforce. Yeah. So coming from the corporate world, I understand what is happening. And here she is, gorgeous as can be. What do they do? They stop eating properly. Mm -hmm. can't sleep properly mm -hmm. she says I work out I go to the gym at five o'clock in the morning until seven come home take care of the kids do this do that I'm at work at nine nine o'clock until about seven o'clock uh she is here is like a hamster's will right going right. round and about and can't stop because the moment she stops she says I don't know what's going to happen I don't want to think what's going to happen. Oh. So we're taking care of all the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgetting how to deal with the inside. Right. It's a And I said, "What is your me time?" And she said, "What me time?" <laughs> right, right. Because you think here's it's the thing, it? Jen, doing hair to her it's maintenance. Going to the gym is maintenance. She has yeah. to look good, she has to look mm -hmm. fit for mm -hmm. herself for her husband. She yeah. has to do the nails because everyone is looking at her. She has, she is a high achiever, 
high producer, everything when you are doing this into that level, which is fantastic. If you don't take care of your body, your body will break you down is what I say. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's avoidance? I mean, subconsciously, do you think it's avoidance that people, you know, I used to say this, and this is something, you know, you and I were talking in the green room and yes, I have a lot of travel that I'm experiencing, but I, I also told you, I tend to take July and August off, right? I don't, I don't, I don't, I work, but I don't do all my travel and stuff. Right. Um, and a lot of my travel is, experiential travel right mm -hmm. where it's not like a work sometimes the travel is that it's fun and work <laughs> right but it's it's just my my job is that I travel and I speak but it's not stressful to right. me as far as that goes but you know I used to call it the glorification of busyness right I would talk to mm -hmm. someone and they're like well I'm going here and I'm doing this and I'm talking to this and I'm doing that and I'm working out and I have all this stuff and and then their whole life is falling apart right and you've heard me say you know, if you look at a wheel on a car, the steel be is, becomes the business and the tire, the, the rubber part is our lives and it gets mm -hmm. holes in it and it gets shredded and we get divorced and we have heart attacks and, you it's know, a nail in it, You're relationships, annoying. problems and stuff. And if we could just re invert that, right. And focus the wheel on our lives and then have our business and all the other peripherals be the tire, I think it would be so much better. And that's what you know, it's what I coach on. It's what I mentor on is that kind of lifestyle because I saw this glorification of busyness and thought, God, you poor thing, because it was, well, no, no, I'm more busy than you. I, I, I subconsciously feel that that's an avoidance of reality because I don't want to, not me. I'm saying people don't want to deal with it. What do you think about that? Because if, if you're well, it's not that they don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, here's one of the things that I say. Doing nothing is doing something. Yeah, it's a choice. <laughs> yeah. uh -uh. It's not about the choice. It's about doing nothing. So when I take someone into that state of hypnosis, they come here and they relax and they go into that state of hypnosis. Some I even ask me, what is the difference between meditation and hypnosis? Because I meditate every single morning. Mm -hmm. So why do I need to be hypnotized? Here's why people come to me. They come to me because they're overwhelmed. They are stressed, going into a panic and anxiety, mm -hmm. have this fear factor they can't sleep well, and they are going through some negative thinking or negative habits, such as overeating, over drinking, over achieving, over uh, verification of eating. So everything is over, either it's either overwhelmed or they cut. Okay. So it's not enough. Yeah. And that creates anxiety when there is that anxiety underneath it there is the uh, resentment underneath resentment is because something hurts and yet I'm not paying attention so I can put that band-aid on by doing meditation hypnosis is something that you go in within yourself that you tap from the conscious bypass the conscious level and bypass the analyzing, judging, criticizing factor to go into the subconscious, which stores all your experiences, emotions, your entire bodily uh, regulated by the subconscious mind. And what I say is going into the experiences to shift the things that are no longer working for you to make it better and healthier. So it's not that we are ignoring it. It's just we're busy doing. So meditation is to go into that zone of space of nothingness. And yet hypnosis is to go deep within in order to resolve and make something better. Yeah, It's to do something with it. So it's not always going to the childhood level because I had a client. This is how stress affects us. We talk about global and yet it's something very simple. At age 29, he picks up a cigarette. Most smokers start in their teenage years. Right. Mm -hmm. So his mother died seven months prior to that. And then he picks up the cigarette and he's 
coming to me because uh, when he came to me, it was two years after his mom had passed away and he'd been smoking for two years and they just had a baby, four month old baby. And his wife said, I want you to stop smoking. So he comes to me because he knew within two to three sessions, he can become a non-smoker. He was referred to me. So we're doing this and I'm like, how long have you been smoking? He's smoking a pack and a half a day. How long have you been smoking? Almost two years. Why did you pick up? He says, I don't know, but I picked it up two years ago. Now in hypnosis, it's like we're doing a timeline going into that factor of when it started, because we need to have that root cause. Sometimes we don't necessarily need it, but in exploration, we get it. Yeah. His mom passes away. And then he's sharing all this when he's in a state of relaxation. So he doesn't have to analyze and criticize and judge himself. He comes to the kitchen. Everybody's in there. Everybody's mourning. He goes to the kitchen and lo and behold, his mom's cigarette is there. Mm. He misses her. And at that very moment, coming out of the funeral, he sees that cigarette, picks up that cigarette, puts it in his mouth and feels the connection that I am now connected with mom. Yeah. And since then, he started to connect. So not everything about our life starts at our childhood. Not everything is our parents' fault. It's a choices that we make. So what I say is just like picking up the phone and looking at the apps that you have and realizing those apps are our experiences and the choices that we have. And that little chip inside the phone or inside our self, which is the subconscious, is where it stores all the information. We open those apps, go in, modify, edit certain apps we want get rid of or delete right. and realizing <laughs> once that. you delete it, yeah. it's never out of the chip. So it's never, we can never delete anything from our memory bank of who we are, but it is no longer affecting us. So all we have to do is you realize mom is always with you. You no longer need cigarette to keep connected to mom. Are you willing to let that go because your life with your wife and the new baby is so much more important? Yeah. So and your in mom life, would want that. yeah, your mom would exactly not want at all. Yeah. Yeah. And the shift that happens, the hypnotherapist, the work we do is take you from that pain level to the gain, which is absolutely right, because that's when we make a shift. We want to move away from something that pains us to go into something that is loving, nurturing, healthy, and joyful, which is the game. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So, so you know, when, when um, so I have two questions because we're getting, yes. getting down to the last time, I have last few minutes here, but I have okay. two questions. So, so one is, um, you know, someone's like, I don't, I don't really know about this hyp hypnosis kind of stuff. And I know you're explaining it, right? Um, and I'm kind of backtracking just a little bit. I probably should have asked the question before you did that. <laughs> But we will not edit this. Um, but but if they're saying, you know, I, yeah, I don't really know about the hypnosis. Couldn't I sort of do this on my own? What are some of the things that, and because I know you're an advocate for hypnosis, but what are some of the things that people have done in the past that have worked if they're not quite ready to go to hypnosis? Is it simply meditation? Is it counseling? Um, is it increasing awareness? If they're saying, you know, hey, you know, maybe I don't want to dip my toe in it quite yet, but what could I do to help give me some relief? Well, I, you can go to my website on healwithin.com and I have all kinds of audio recording. You can download it and listen to it in the comfort of your home. Get the experience of just relaxing with mm -hmm. listening to the suggestions and then see how you like it. You, we go in and out of hypnosis every single day. We sit in the car. We know where we're going. We get to the destination in between. We're singing. We're talking on the phone. Some people even watch a movie right there. Right, right. Or you're having a conversation. You get to your destination and you wonder. You never How did I do twice. this? Right. 
how did I do that? Because we are going into that auto zone automatically and hypnosis is nothing but an internal connection. And we do this all day long. Yeah. So everything that we do habitual is like we're in uh, that Zen state. So what we do when we hypnotize someone is bring you to full awareness instead of taking you in. Right, it's right. Just, so you can, there is no magic. Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, one of the things that I'm doing every five days is practicing being ambidextrous, right? So my, my, my phone comes up and it says, practice being ambidextrous. And I'm like, okay, what can I do today? You know, whether it's brushing my teeth with my opposite hand or it's reaching for something with a different hand or it's using the clicker on the TV with my different hand, you know, and I'm practicing. That's mindfulness also. Yeah. And that's, that's really what it is, is it's, it's increasing the awareness to do that. Okay. But we want them to come to you. However, we do want them to cut everybody. Listen, if you're, you're listening to this, go, go see Lisa. But I have a question about, you know, you have, um, I know one of the topics that you talk about is gaining weight due to emotional uh, burdens that people have. And I, and I know that you work with women specifically. So can you break down the hormonal changes that women go through that gains weight versus the emotional changes. And how do you discern whether it's a hormonal or an emotional burden that's creating weight gain specifically in women? Okay. I'm over 60. So I know that uh, women between 48 and uh, 55 go through menopausal yeah. and menopause in itself can last from pre-menopause to post-menopause mm -hmm. uh, about 16 years. Mm -hmm. So we go through this emotional up and down. The body goes through this fluctuation. Now, hormonal is something that if you have already gone to the doctors and uh, done all the lab tests and they specifically say, okay, it is your hormones, your hormone level has gone up and down. Okay, now we know that there is something right there uh, physically that it's happening. Okay, that is the health and medical aspect. We right. can work that because uh, women come to me for a lot of menopause and through hypnosis, we can reduce the, uh, the reaction to menopause, the um, the way we sweat, the, the way symptom. our emotions go yeah. up and down. We work with blood pressure and everything. We can reduce blood pressure. I hypnotize myself and I've had uh, seven root canals with absolutely no anesthetics, no topical, no nothing, because uh -huh. we can be very acute in what we want to numb or bypass the pain factor. So yeah. what is an emotional weight? It is burdens. Mm -hmm. uh, shame, guilt that we load on that has been, we stuff it and we have it like on our shoulder. And what we say, I've been carrying that for such a long time. Yeah. What have you been carrying? See, even the words that we use <laughs> yeah. gives me an indication. So if you have been carrying it, if it is a load, it's a heavy load, and you haven't realized, you stuff by eating. You stuff it, oral gratification, you stuff it by drinking, eating, smoking. All three of them are nothing but oral gratification. So when we have weight that it's a yo-yo, we go up and down, up and down, we lose it, we gain it, we lose it, we gain it. It's not any more physical. Find the cause, root cause. Why do you eat thinking that that hole is never full? You're never full. You're never satisfied. And there's always something that it's like not enough. And that part is an emotional. Yeah. I had a client who came to me overweight. And in the last eight sessions, she's dropped over 14 pounds. And that's because we are peeling away a lot of emotional burden and a secret that she had been holding onto, carrying all these years, that frankly, it was no longer a secret. It's just she didn't realize that the subconscious, that inner child of hers, we call it inner child, not the little child, inner self. Had been carrying it and it was heavy 
heavy, heavy. And she dropped that heaviness, feeling light, feeling free by expressing it instead of suppressing it. Yeah. So those are emotional burdens and weight. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, you know, do carry burdens. I, you know, I used to tell my daughter cause she, she wears her heart on her sleeve, right? Like everybody, mm. she, I said, look, you care, don't carry. Well, how do I always say it? I don't say it that way. I say care, but don't carry care about exactly. them, but don't carry their burden. And she was carrying their burden, you know? And I think that that's something, you know, that maybe, you know, through journaling, through meditation, we can start thinking about what it, what is it I'm carrying? What is it that is, you know, if, if someone's, you know, experiencing, and I don't know what your definition of yo-yo is. I mean, to me, yo-yo is a pretty wide range. You know, I think a couple of pounds here and there, you know, up, down, all around is not a big thing, but when you're talking up to five pounds is nothing. I'm talking about over 10 pounds, 15, yeah, 10, 15 pounds, that kind of yo-yoing you know, is to think about, you know, going back and saying, well, when, when was I thin? When what was I heavy? When was I thin? You know, what were, what was going on in my life? And I think journaling can really help you open that exactly. up. Gosh, you know, what are the things? And it's a timeline. This is yeah. where I am. This is where I was. What's happening in my life? What was happening in my life yeah. then? Not yeah. only within yourself, with your body, but your family, yeah. your environment, your home. I mean, even at the workplace, sometimes even at the workplace in the corporate world, uh, if there is, you know, all that, that it's happening, you come inside your cubicle and you're stuffing yourself with something and, or you're resenting someone, all that, it's a heaviness. Yeah. It's funny because I've always been thin. I've never been heavy or anything, but um, I remember looking at pictures of myself. I, I honestly, God's truth. I remember looking at pictures of myself and going, Hey, you look a little chunky right before I leave a company when I was in the corporate mm. world, right before I left the company. And then I would see pictures after I left the company and went to a new company. And I was all of a sudden I looked more taunt. And then I'd see later on at that company, I was starting to not look so taunt. And I, I'm talking about a fluctuation of five or six pounds, but you know, I'm only five, four, but but I can see that when I, when I'm not unhappy or when I'm unhappy in my work, that I start putting, putting some pounds on just a tiny bit, but enough yeah. that I can see it in pictures and go, Whoa, look at that. That's interesting for me to know, you know, is it, Ooh, you know, when that's happening. So I think that's important in the corporate world too. So, so Lisa, yes. you have, um, tell us real quickly, how, I mean, we I, we have all of the links below. We know how to get in touch with you, et cetera. But tell us about who your perfect client is. You probably do a whole scope of things, but what, who's your perfect client for that person who's listening, whether they're the person, they know a person, or they know someone who knows a person? Thank you for this question. Uh, if you are feeling overwhelmed, um, under stress, feeling anxiety and not realizing what it is and to, you are ready to uh, let that pain go and uh, be free, feeling that calmness and peace, want peace within yourself. And once you have that and want to feel confident and know that you can, because a lot of my clients don't even believe that they matter. So, and I wanted to say, it's time for us to evoke what was, it's to acknowledge it so that you can embrace what is the reality right here and evolve to your desired goal because you do matter. Yeah. And I, I love that your company is called Heal Within, right? And it's, so it's all the inside job right, exactly. that we have to be working on. And, and this is right. becoming even more of a prevalent topic as time goes on, as we experience more external, um, you know, issues, we have internal issues, COVID didn't help us, the pandemic didn't help us. So there's a lot of things that are going on. And especially as women going through menopause, you know, going through that menopausal stage, you know, either peri or menopause or postmenopause, you know, there's right. a lot of emotional burden on who we thought we were. And now we're looking in the mirror, we're going, who are we? And, and yet, I feel like we've all come into our own as who we are inside, right? We've come to our own. It's like, I know, 
you know, and now I get you feel lost. It's like, I don't know who I am. Yeah, like you flipped inside out. Yeah. It's just the craziest thing because, you know, before it was like the outside and I, you know, trying to please everybody and do all those Mm -hmm. things and try to climb a corporate ladder and all that. And then you go, wait a minute, I'm who I am and I'm feel good with that. And then all of a sudden it's like, what happened to the outside? Right. So, right? yeah, you uh, want to fix the outside, you want to fix the relationships start with you. Yeah. I know it's a lot of people right. say such a cliche, but it is not truly once I healed within, that's what I call it. That's why the company is healed yeah. within a lot of things started falling into place. I up. found the job that I really love instead of wanting a job that and yet Thought everything I do is of service and helping people. Just yeah. in a different way. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally love it. I love it. Lisa, thank you so much for what you're doing in the world. Um, I Again, I love your energy. I love what um, you're doing for women. I know that you work with men as well. So we'll make sure everybody hears that, uh, that they know that you work with when, um, men as well. And I want to just ask you this last question. Is there a quote or a mantra that you would like to leave with us today? Oh. What a beautiful uh, closing. No matter where you are, no matter who you are with, always remember one thing. You're looking at yourself and that's the best you can find. So take care of her or him. I love it. Beautiful. Well-spoken. Thank you so much, Lisa, again, for joining us today. I thank you. Appreciate it. And I want to thank say- you, Jen. Absolutely. And I want to say thank you for joining us today and taking time out of your busy day. I am so grateful for everyone who listens in. And we appreciate a great five-star review and some comments about Lisa so that she knows what the impact is um, that she has given on this time that we've had together. And last but not least, run on over to YouTube and subscribe to YouTube and make sure that that you're part of our community and watching us as well as listening to us because today we got the memo about wearing white. <laughs> so, <laughs> you won't know that unless you see us. Right? And you know what I love? We both have about our plans. We both have that design thing going on. I mean, it's from day one. We were connected. <laughs> it's, it's divine intervention. I absolutely love it. Well, again, everybody, thank you so much for listening. And Lisa, thank you so much for being such a wonderful guest. We'll catch you next time on Success to Significance Life After Breaking Through Glass Ceilings. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.